and welcome to Watson Premier League Match Day 33 back in YouTube with Tom Rennie to analyze this great match day in the title race in between European ties after Liverpool dropping points again against Man United. A lot to talk about with the great, the mighty Tom Rennie. Hello. Yeah, just as we predicted, a draw at Old Trafford. Who saw that coming? Oh, me. Oh, yeah. Indeed, uh, poor Liverpool dropping points the whole season with Man United. A lot of draws also for the English teams in the Champions League. Man City, Arsenal, perhaps they keep an eye on these ties instead of in the title race or perhaps not. We will see very soon. In the meantime, of course, uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, comment the video with us. And now let's go on with the show. That was a good intro, I must say, Tom, just to start uh, with you. Now is your time to analyze the first good game in Newcastle. Tottenham, uh, I guess we should expect uh, goals and goals in this one. Uh, Newcastle beat Fulham 1-0. Uh, Guimaraes scored the winner with sports. is always goals. Uh, beat Forest 3-1, level on points with Aston Villa. Four wins in the last uh, six. But if we see the waveform, is one win in the last six. Yeah, it's. I mean, this screams both teams to score, right? It screams two teams that love to attack. There are teams here who would prefer to win than to draw. And frankly, in Newcastle's case, need to win this game of football. The battle to be in European football next season is really close. It's going to be really tight between a selection of teams that all, contrary to popular belief, want to be in those competitions. And so Newcastle... Need victory here and a good run of form as well with two wins in the last three. Though, to be fair, probably shouldn't have beaten West Ham on the strength of the performance across the 90s. Struggled a lot against Fulham last week. But we're at the stage of the season where the performance doesn't matter. No one's going to remember that. What matters is seven points from a possible nine. Puts them now within touching distance, not only of West Ham in seventh, but Man United in sixth, who have stumbled in recent weeks. There's every chance six, seventh. And eighth are all European qualifiers next season. And so a huge game for Newcastle United. Uh, still a massive injury list. That, that's been the story of the season, really. I mean, I won't bore everyone going through the entirety of the list once again. But still one or two significant ones worth mentioning. Uh, Callum Wilson not being available for the last few weeks means no rotation with Isak. Still no Nick Pope. We're not going to see him till next season. Uh, Sven Botman injured recently is pretty significant as well with Jamal Lascelles out too. There are injuries defensively for Newcastle. As for Tottenham, the former James Madison, I think I bored you to tears over the years talking about James Madison, but without him, the season faltered. With him, they've been very, very good once again. Uh, one defeat in their last five. That was that poor performance at Fulham, the anomaly that kind of proves the rule of how good they've been. 4-0 victory at Villa. Tough game at West Ham. They could have won, could have lost it. Big derby for West Ham. And then, of course, really impressive, as we predicted, both teams to score in the victory over Forest last weekend. So, look, there's a few score lines here. I think the need to win for Newcastle is greater, but I think the calibre of attacking talent available is greater for Tottenham. So, draw at 3.9. Just really like that. I think that's a lovely, clean bet. Uh, 4.26 now that's gone up to since I looked this morning. That's gone up since um, I made that prediction. Really nice. 3-1 to one draw. Double it with both teams to score. It was 3.75. I think that has gone up. And that will go up um, over the next 24 hours, 48 hours or so and still, until kickoff. So draw on both teams to score. And if you look at the, the goal scoring this season, uh, at home, Newcastle, the third highest scorers with 39 goals. Away from home, Tottenham have scored 31. So the stats tend to suggest it. Both teams to score, really likely. I'll pick for a draw, but go Newcastle if you pick both teams to score and you make some money. I also like this bet. I'm making it a lot at the minute. It doesn't always come in, so this is a bit of a prop bet. But Tottenham to win from behind in this game. I know I did it last week and they scored the opening goal. It wasn't my first tip last week and it's not my first tip this week. But this is going to come in. And when it does, you're going to feel so pleased with yourself. So Tottenham to win from behind in this game brings you to eight. I like it. I'm taking it. 
Well, uh, most of our people are going for a draw, as you are doing, even for the two all draw for Achilles, a high scoring game, uh, over 2.5 goals and both teams to score as well. Uh, and Divide uh, is saying West Ham were robbed against Newcastle. I think you can agree on that, uh, Tom. With the yeah, two. I think that person is absolutely right. That's the cleverest person watching this program. Well, well said. <laughs> Next game uh, for the relegation, uh, Brentford, Sheffield United. Massive game for Brentford to secure uh, staying in the Premier League next season. I guess they will uh, stay, but they are only four points away from Luton Town. And they have to win this one after the draw against Aston Villa. Also, Sheffield United surprises uh, drawing against Chelsea in the very last minute. It's 16 goals conceded in the last five for Sheffield, so they are getting closer and closer to the record hold by Swindon Town, 100 goals conceded in the Premier League. Yeah, I think they'll get there as well, frankly. I think they will get there across the seven games remaining. I just think they're going to take a few more thrashings, though I will say last week, you know, at some point Chelsea are going to thrash somebody, so I, I took my punt on last week and it didn't happen, um, which is frustrating. Uh, lots of goals, as we predicted, but I went all Chelsea. So, they have got better. They are a bit more respectable. They're going to go down bottom probably in three rounds from now. So, you know, commendation at least for Sheffield United making a bit of a fight of it. But this game's all about Brentford. Um, in another season, they would have gone down. In another season, this would be really testing times for Thomas Frank and his players. But seven wins might well get you up this season, which is what they have, which is extraordinary. It's incredibly low. Usually, you need double figures of wins to stay in the league. I'm not sure they're going to get there. Um, three points in their last five games, three draws in a row. The game against Villa last week was brilliant in its way. Um, but in the end, Brentford should have won it when they got 3-2 up. You have to win from that position. It was a have-to match from that point, and they didn't deliver on it. So a uh, tricky one, this. You can't go Sheffield United, obviously, just three wins all season. So I'm not going to bet on them. Brentford to win is tough, but... I was going to pip draw because three draws in a row suggest the run continues. I usually look for that kind of thing. But I just feel Brentford are going to beat Sheffield United, right? They're going to win this game. So how are they going to win it? To win is no good. If Ivan Tony scores, and if Ivan Tony scores, Brentford have been doing well recently, and Brentford win, that brings you in around 2.63. I think that'll get to 2-1, two to one, which is three on your decimals, by the time we get to the weekend. So lay that late. That'll be a double your money bet. I also looked at a few props for this one as well. And Ivan Tony against Man United had so many shots at goal against Villa. Had a couple of decent chances. Three shots on target for Ivan Tony in the game. In a game where he's playing against the team who have conceded 82 goals this season. That brings you in a double your money. Threes. That's two to one. So I like that too. All right, uh, Brentford win. They have not won in nine games. They will be hungry. Well, they are hungry. They are getting closer to the relegation. Unless they keep deducting points from Everton, then you don't have to win any game and you are going to be safe. Uh, Burnley Brighton is the next one. Burnley, another team going to play championship next season. Six points away from salvation. Brighton uh, lost to Arsenal. It's only one point in the last three games. And away from home, they are not getting the results. I guess we should back them because they are a better team than Burnley. But this is a tricky one, Tom. It's tricky. And I do think the game is going to be closer than we imagine it would be between a team in 10th and a team in 19th. A team who have played valiantly at points in European football this season and a team that have just not stood up to the mark in the Premier League in Burnley. But... I do think it will be closer than that because Burnley have tightened things up in the last couple of weeks. If you look across their last five or six games, 2-2 two -two draw at West Ham. Maybe could have lost that by more, but we're 2-0 up in that match. 2-1 um, victory uh, against Brentford, really important. Went to Chelsea and drew. Drew against Wolves. Tight loss against Everton last week. Exactly as we predicted, by the way. A victory for Everton under 2.5 goals. Didn't think it would be an embarrassing goal uh, like the one we saw from Calvert-Lewin, but there we are. So... Burnley have tightened things up in the last few weeks and Brighton, despite so many both teams to score games this season, have been pretty consistent in the low scoring nature of so many of their results and the tight nature of their games. 51 scored, 49 conceded across the campaign tells you that uh, an average scoreline basically of 1-1 across the campaign for uh, 
for, for Brighton. So I wouldn't be surprised if it sort of finished similar here. I think the average is 1.7, 1.6 or something like that. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was something similar here. I wouldn't be amazed if this game finished as a draw. But I, I do quite like a group bet here. I think Brighton are a better team than Burnley and will win it in the end. Cover the bases here with a spread of results. 1-0, 2-0, 2-1. Um, that brings you in at 3.5. I think that's quite a nice bet. Uh, I love a group bet, as you know. It covers a lot of bases, and these are the three most common score lines in football. Um, and so take that. And I've actually gone really conservative here. Uh, Brighton under 4.5 goals in the match. That's so conservative, I know, but it's a bit unpredictable. But that brings you in at 2.63. You went under 3.5, covering the previous bets. That's a double your money, uh, but that's a lovely safe bet, I think, this weekend. Well, this is uh, Marcos Paul, actually. He has given the same exact tip, Brighton to win and under 4.5 uh, goals, uh, half-time draw, full-time Brighton. This could be also a good one, and I'm sure it pays really well. Good luck to find good odds in the next one. Man City, Luton Town. Uh, Man City with the eyes uh, in uh, Real Madrid, I guess. Uh, let's see if we see Kyle Walker, if we see... Ederson, if we see De Bruyne, they all uh, were missing at the game at uh, Bernabeu. I almost suffered a heart attack, but here I am on Tuesday. was a roller coaster for Man City, but the schedule is nice uh, with them. Uh, after this game, by the way, they have uh, Real Madrid and they have the FA Cup semi-final. So I guess a bit of a rest for Guardiola's men. Yeah, heavy rotation. And look, I will take no lectures from Pep Guardiola about too many games, not enough resources. I, I just find the whole thing to be an embarrassment, frankly, considering no Kevin De Bruyne in midweek. Look, he was unwell, fine, but they still managed to bring in Phil Foden and Bernardo Silva. And I could go on and on and on about the quality of the squad that Pep Guardiola has at his disposal. And Mateus Nunez, they brought in in the summer for more ramp to wander at 60 million pound. Who's seen him? Who knows he exists? You know, so maybe he'll get a few minutes in this game against Luton. I don't know. I, I won't waste any time on Luton here in this particular game. Uh, they're going to go down probably by about three or four points. Um, but to be fair, in another season without points deductions, they'd probably be down already. So how are you going to make some money here? Um, the trouble is with so many City games this season, they haven't really put teams to the sword. We've had this conversation a few times. They've scored a lot of goals, 38 at home this season and did score four against Villa in their last match. But in general... 1-0, 2-1, 3-1. You know, that's been the, the general consensus of, of City score lines. But if you're going to bet on them, look at those handicap markets. Uh, minus three, that's a 4-0 victory or above, brings you in at 2.88. Not too bad, really, considering it's City against Luton. It depends on how much the second string want to go hell for leather for it. Uh, I also just like the goals market on its own. Forget the result. A City to score four goals was 2.1 this morning. To score five goals. And that allows a concession as well, which is not impossible considering the run of results they've had at home this season. To score five, 3.75. Not too bad for Man City at home against, what, third bottom. Julian Alvarez to score. Uh, Hassan Stelinas could be a good option. I guess uh, Haaland will have some rest after the battle with uh, Antonio Rudiger. So... Uh, Julian Alvarez to score could be a great option for this game. Uh, Luton Town uh, level on points with uh, Nottingham Forest. And Nottingham Forest, they have two massive games. First, Wolves, which is a very winnable uh, team right now because they have uh, nothing to play for. And then they have Everton. So this is a very important game. The problem is that Forest is too favourite no, for this game. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't touch it at 2.25. No way. That's... That's too low for a team that have not won enough games this season. That's the reason why they're, they're in this relegation scrap. I think it's five wins at home this season from 16. That is nowhere near enough uh, for any Premier League team, especially if you can't win away as well. Um, look, I like Forest. I do. I think they're going to stay in the league. Um, and I think they're going to stay in the league on the strength of their ability to score goals. I think the Fulham game is going to be my guide here, uh, where they won by three goals to one at the start of April. I think if Gibbs White gives his usual intensity and creativity, Chris Wood uh, on really good goal scoring form right now up front. I think if all that comes together offensively, they're going to be too strong for a Wolverhampton Wanderers team who have maybe the thinnest squad in the league. And you take away Huang Hee Chan, 
You take away Pedro Neto from that. In recent weeks, they've had number Teos Cunha. There's doubts about Ryan Aitnori here, who's been terrific this season offensively for them. You know, some talk Chan might be back, but I just think that even if he does come back in, not played for ages, got to get his eye in again, all sorts of issues for, for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And to your point, season's over, really, for Wolves. They aren't going to be in the top eight, top nine. No chance of relegation. And I think they're a team that might need to start thinking about what the next phase of, of Wolverhampton Wanderers is. So, what do we think for Forrest? Well, my guide has been the victory over Fulham and the victory over West Ham in recent weeks by two goals to nil. A lovely group bet here. Spread it across the three most popular scorelines in football. 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, 3.5. I found that for this morning. That's really, really nice. I would even look at the handicap here. I would look at a minus one handicap that's 2 nil or above. I think they're going to score a few goals against Wolverhampton Wanderers, who have struggled without Craig Dawson at centre-half in recent times. 4.3. Uh, I found that for yesterday. Uh, might be a little bit tighter, but I'd, you can find that at three. Find it at four. I think that's quite nice, that. The longer you wait, I think you'll get good odds on that one. And Forrest to win to nil. Because I just don't fancy Wolves to score. They have not scored enough goals this season. Uh, that brings you in at four as well, which I really quite like. Uh, and again, Wolves away from home this season. Um, scored a lot of goals in the opening week to the campaign. I think it's one goal in their last three away from home. So the odds suggest it. Well, I think this is a terrible game to bet on as Hassan is still in yeah. us. Very difficult with not uh, great odds. Uh, these are Tom's uh, tips. Uh, we can see our audience. Uh, there are there is a little bit of everything in uh, our audience. Um, last game on Saturday is Bournemouth Man United uh, and United, despite the draw against uh, Liverpool, they are the underdog for this game. The odds for Man United to win is 2.8. Actually, after a good result, uh, usually Man United uh, screw it up, so it could be a great idea also to back uh, Bournemouth and well it's only one win in the last six Premier League games for Man United uh, I guess the game of the season if it's not against Coventry next week in the semi FA Cup semi-finals is the FA Cup for sure is the easiest way to grab or the only way to grab a trophy yeah that's true um they've got a great draw of course in the FA Cup and I'd expect them to cruise past Coventry next week but in this particular game really interesting because, again, that battle for uh, sixth, seventh, eighth, really, really going to be close. I think there's going to be maybe three points between the team who finishes sixth and the team that finishes ninth. And ninth will miss out on European football, potentially. Uh, eighth might miss out as well. The coefficient now very close. Um, essentially, English football is relying on City and Liverpool or West Ham to win the uh, two European competitions they're in and Villa to win the Conference League. And if that happens... European football goes down to eighth. There's some scenario where sixth Champions League teams could qualify, but I think West Ham need to finish fifth and win the Europa League, which two things aren't going to happen, but there is a scenario at least. Um, look, I think in this particular game that Bournemouth have been great at points this season. They're, they're on another brilliant streaky run of form. They have a goal scorer in Dominic Solanke. If he does go in the summer, I'd be fascinated to see A, who they replace him with, if they can attract anybody of, of the calibre that Dominic Solanke has become, and B, how they get on without someone who has scored 15-plus goals in the league this season. Because without that goal scorer, um, a lot of fun at times to watch Bournemouth, but it's going to be interesting. I hope he stays. Um, but Semenya has been good at points. I like Scott and Adams in midfield. Seeing them play together against, I think, Palace last week was good. That was the plan for the entire season. We haven't seen it until, like, April, so... I think that's a positive for, for Bournemouth. And yeah, we'll see where they go moving forward. For Manchester United, I mean, how they got something against Liverpool last week, I don't know. They didn't even really play well defensively. You know, like when a team from the mid-table beats a title chaser, you're like, oh, amazing performance from the centre-half or the goalkeeper. Not really. Liverpool just kept missing the target. Right. And offensively, a couple of great goals. You know, the Manu goal was good and the Bruno Fernandes goal was uh, brilliant impudence. But I just I'm not seeing it. I don't see it. And I think that, you know, against Brentford, they could have lost about 15 nil in, in that previous away game I watched. So unbelievably tricky this. I would usually say any Man United scoreline around double your money, you should take it. But I'm not that confident of a Manchester United win. I'm pretty confident here of a draw. I'm confident of a draw because United keep getting results they don't deserve. And I feel like 
Bournemouth are not going to have the ability to score more than one in this game. And at home, despite the recent good form, they have lost five times at home this season and have scored 21 on average of about 1.3 a game. Not a high average of scoring goals for Bournemouth. Plus, even though it's the Man United game, the season is starting to wrap up for Bournemouth. So how much desire is there to win it? That's going to be a question. If you are going to pick a winner, I would plump for, for Bournemouth. That brings you to 2.5. It's quite nice. Straight up victory here for both teams is quite nice. So if you're going to go with your gut, then pick your winner. My gut says draw, and I like it. If you take Manchester United, look at the Man United run this season. Both teams to score keeps coming up for Man United. Often as a 1-1, occasionally as a 2-2. Look at late goals for Man United as well. Uh, Man United to win, BTTS brings you in at double your money as well. Okay, great thoughts in this game. Eh? It's a very good game to bet on, uh, both teams to score. Yes, for instance, Nena is telling us, Pedro Lucas, both teams to lose. <laughs> well, it's not this kind of game. Both teams to lose would be Burnley, Sheffield United, for instance. This is uh, both teams to lose. Marco is going for the draw. On uh, Sunday, we have uh, three games, teams involved in European competitions, uh, starting with... Liverpool Crystal Palace, uh, Liverpool playing Atalanta in the Europa League and they have to bounce back uh, after dropping points uh, with uh, Man United. They have Fulham and Everton next away games. Uh, I guess they are winnable games, uh, but well, be careful, Tom, because uh, Crystal Palace, they have nothing to play for, but they put a fight uh, with Man, U Man City last week. They did, and they'll put up another fight in this game as well. Um, new manager, I think, in Jean-Philippe Matete. They've got one of the form strikers in the league. We got to see Elise and Essay again before they get injured for two months again uh, last weekend. So, some positives around Crystal Palace, and they will finish 12th. They own it. They always finish there. It was always going to happen. Life finds a way. Um, in, in terms of Liverpool, I mean, last week was incredibly... Dis depressing, distressing, miserable for Liverpool. Should have won that game by a huge margin. And if they don't end up champions this season, it will be because of drop points against Manchester United on two occasions. Um, that's how tight this title race is going to be. And every drop point is going to be critical in the end. And they should have won that. Um, Mo Salah, I mean, how many chances at the moment? I, I saw one of the commentators at the weekend say, like a collector's item, Mo Salah misses chance. Mo Salah misses lots of chances. It's just that he creates lots of chances, has lots of shots. Um, and usually one flies in. The penalty did last week in the game before. In his 12th shot, it did. Um, so look at the Mo Salah to have lots of shots market, at least five or more in this game, I'd expect, from Salah if he plays. I expect him to. Um, but I think Liverpool are still going to win this match, right? The, the odds suggested they're the best team at home in the league this season. 13 wins and three draws. Um, I think they win this one in a similar sort of vein to the game against Sheffield United, where they struggled in the opening 10 to 15 minutes, came on stronger as the game goes on, make a few changes, score a few late goals and win it comfortably in the end. Um, a conservative minus two handicap here brings you in at 2.5. I think they will score three goals. Um, it's just whether they can avoid the silly opening concession they did against Brighton and Sheffield United. Um, I think that. They scored three against Burnley, four against Luton, three against Sheffield United, a couple against Brighton. So I think you can feel reasonably confident of uh, of at least a three goaler here. Um, to win from behind, similar to the Tottenham bet, it's happened a few times this campaign. That brings you an eight again. It's a bit of a prop bet. It's not one I'd recommend as my top tip, but to win from behind uh, at eight is really, really nice. That's seven to one. Uh, Ten shots on target. Brings you to double your money too, considering the sheer amount of shots they had against Sheffield United and Manchester United. That's really nice at 3.25. They are a team that aren't afraid to shoot from anywhere, so that's quite nice too. Um, and in terms of Crystal Palace, the only thing I bet on is the former Jean-Philippe Mateta. Scored the opener against uh, Man City last week. Really good goal-scoring former player who has improved since coming to the Premier League. And so if you're looking for any Palace thing here, I'd take that. There are some bookies that allow you to book on expected goals, XG, and Liverpool is a very good one for this because in every game we see lots of chances, lots of shots, and a really high XG expected goals. Liverpool minus one for Hassan. 
3-1 could be an option. Well, they have to win this game. That's for sure. We expect, I guess, the three title contenders to win this uh, match day. Although, let's see with uh, Arsenal in a minute. Before, let's analyze West Ham. Fulham, uh, the odds are great, to be honest, for West Ham, considering the away poor form from, for Fulham. But on the other hand, Tom, West Ham have uh, this key game with uh, Leverkusen in uh, Europe and also the home form is quite poor this season for the Hammers. Yeah, not good enough at home this season. Seven draws at home. That's the big concern for, for West Ham United, which is why so many have spoken about David Moyes. Can you coach against the low block at home? And if they could, West Ham might be in Champions League contention with the quality of their away form this season, but at home just haven't been good enough. And they've drawn three in a row. Uh, one victory in their last five and only 26 goals scored. It's way under par for a team who've got a lot of goal scorers in it. And as you mentioned, we're recording this before the Leverkusen match. If they've lost it 4-0, which is a possibility, I expect there to be repercussions for Fulham in this match. If it's a tight 1-2-0 or two nil loss, which I kind of feel like it might be, um, they're going to be very conservative here. The trouble is they can't rotate. There's no squad. Again, third year running, West Ham have gone deep in Europe and they haven't built a squad to rotate in these sorts of games. It's infuriating. But if Antonio's played in midweek, he can't play in this one. Jared Bowen's injured, so has missed Thursday. I think he would likely miss this one as well. And what does that leave you? There's nothing really left for West Ham to change. He doesn't like playing Danny Ings and Max Cornet. He just won't play them. So um, I think West Ham are going to struggle here, frankly. I think they're going to struggle I wouldn't be surprised to see them lose the match. Uh, after European games this season, they probably had their worst record uh, than the previous two seasons. Uh, in a couple of days afterwards, they've struggled a lot, certainly at home, to win these games. A lot of teams do, but West Ham have really struggled. So, uh, And Fulham, look, their away form has been poor this season. Their performance at Nottingham Forest left a lot to be desired, but they were overpowered by Forest. I don't think that's going to happen here. So, look, take the draw. Because West Ham's form at home this season has brought you seven draws and three in a row. 3.85 for the draw is really nice as well. I wouldn't touch West Ham. I just cannot see them winning this game. Fulham to win on its own. Double your money with West Ham's issues. I think it's a no-brainer, really. Double chance. Fulham and draw. You'll make some money here. All right, uh, the draw looks uh, good for this game. And on uh, Sunday as well, we have Arsenal, Aston Villa in the title contenders. Uh, this is the hardest game for a uh, team, uh, Arsenal, after the draw against Bayern Munich. I guess they expected uh, more, especially at home. They have to save some energy for the Allianz uh, Arena. But in the Premier League, they are doing great. Also at home, is five home games uh, since the defeat against uh, West Ham. Aston Villa, later they are conceding a lot of goals. Uh, probably we should see goals in this game. Oh, this is awful, this game. I think someone earlier mentioned Forest Wolves as the tough one. I think this is the tough one uh, of the weekend because I think there's every chance... This could be the game where Arsenal bow out of the title race. It's going to be so close this season. And I think Aston Villa are a horrible opponent to play when you're in that kind of scenario. The, the positive for Arsenal is that Villa have played two days later uh, in their Conference League game uh, against Lille. So um, we'll see how much rotation Unai Emery can do. But it's a real horrible game for both teams, really, in a lots of ways. Look, Arsenal, I think, will be disappointed with midweek, not just because they didn't win, but because of the the performance. It wasn't good enough, really. Um, mistakes all over the field consistently, um, leading to goals, leading to a penalty that should have been. And Bakayo Saka didn't dive good enough. Simple as that, right? If you've got Neuer rushing out at you, I think a lot of players, the top players I'm talking about here, would be able to buy a penalty out of that. And Bakayo Saka made the mistake of just leaping into the goalkeeper like he was a superhero. He needed to take another step, make that collision look real. You know, that's cheating, but that's the game. And he cheated badly. And that's why he didn't get the penalty. Cheat well, win the game. That's kind of the mantra of the Champions League in a lot of ways. So going to be tricky this. I think Trossard comes in. I think there'll be a rest for Jorginho. I think there's every chance that Jesus gets a start here, but gets taken off. Um, I don't expect heavy, but I expect significant rotation, maybe four or five players for Arsenal. And that opens the door for Aston Villa, who have had a tough time in recent weeks. They, they haven't been the force of the first half of the season. There's been one win in the last five, including 
Uh, the thrashing against Tottenham Hotspur, a poor performance against Manchester City. Again, they could have won and lost against Brentford last week. Conceding lots of goals, they will concede here, but also scoring a decent amount of goals as well. 66 scored this season uh, is the fourth best in the division. And away from home, they picked up some brilliant results this campaign. Um, and I think it's three wins in the last five. They're one point in the last two. Seven wins away from home. Really, really good. So um, anyone's guess, really. I would pick for Arsenal just about. But I think both teams to score brings it in at a nice number, around 2.63. I think that'll get to double your money. Arsenal win and both teams to score. Um, and if you take away the result here, which I'm inclined to do, look at both teams to score and under 4.5 goals in the match. That covers a lot of bases here. That's both teams winning. That's both teams scoring. That's 2.88. A double your money leaving the result aside and just backing both teams to score. I, I like that. And that's what I'll be taking. Well, the odds for Arsenal to win are uh, really, really low. Um, over 3.5 goals for DJ. And we have some questions for you, Tom, Marco and Hassan uh, are asking you about your input in the second leg, uh, Bayern Arsenal, if you see Arsenal qualifying. Oh, I think that's nasty now. I think that's nasty. My gut before the game was that Arsenal had to win by at least one goal. Um, I think maybe two clear goals would have made me very comfortable and confident of an Arsenal victory. But I think the issue with Bayern, and we've undervalued them, is that in most other seasons, what they have done this season would have been enough to win the league. The trouble is Bayer Leverkusen are putting on maybe the greatest season in German football history. Uh, and I'll let you German football experts discuss that at length, but it's it's going to be up there. It could be an invincible season and they're champions this weekend, April 13th. They could be champions. So I think we've undervalued Bayern. And at the moment, as things stand, I'd make Bayern favourite. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's very difficult to win at the Allianz Arena. And for Monday, Chelsea Everton. I was reading the comments in the tweet after the Chelsea Sheffield United and all uh, Chelsea fans uh, were tweeting, poach out, poach out. I think they had enough of uh, Pochettino, but uh, probably they... Oh, he will finish the season as a Chelsea manager. Lately, we see a lot of goals in Chelsea's games uh, for... Everton, uh, the win against Burnley was massive, but they keep uh, deducting points, so they are still involved in the relegation battle. Look, I think on Chelsea, um, they needed a big result against Sheffield United last week. I thought it was going to come, but it didn't. They've been appalling to bet on all season. Um, so unpredictable, home and away. The only thing really worth banking on is Cole Palmer having an influence on the match, but it's worth noting in his goal stats, though it's not insignificant, most of them have been penalties. You know, he's the penalty taker. They've won a lot of penalties and he's converted them all. So, look, I think Pochettino's going. The fans didn't really care for him at the start. He's not done much to endear himself to the, the supporter base. The season has been pretty unspectacular. I think the reason he stays in his job right now is because the battle for 6th, 7th and 8th remains very live. Uh, Chelsea would definitely want to be in the Europa League next season. I think they wouldn't want to be in the conference. Um, but, a qualification for Europe, considering where they were, would be success for Chelsea this season. So we'll see how that goes. But either way, I don't think Pochettino is around to see it. For Everton, another point of deduction. Um, I, they're going to repeal it, but I don't see it getting reduced. It's now about looking at the base number and seeing what they've got to get. 27 points is where they are. I think 32 will get you safe. I don't think Luton are going to get to that number. That means from now... Everton need a win and two draws or five draws, which might be more likely. Um, I just I hate this game. I hate it. I'm not going to bet on Everton to win because that's insane. Um, the victory <laughs> at the weekend was their first this year, and that came from a freak goal where Murich hits it against Calvert Lewin. No, two and two for him now. One lucky and one penalty, but he still scored two and two, so that's good. Um, so I can't bet on Everton to win, but on Chelsea to win this season at times has been insane. So the, the things I'll look at here are if Chelsea win, they do it with Cole Palmer scoring. Palmer to score and Chelsea to win brings you to 2.5. I think it's quite nice and probably the most likely scenario of all. Uh, the other thing I'd look at here is Chelsea struggling to score in the first half of the game, struggling to score in the game in its entirety but coming on to win the game late on. They have been better in second half this season, Chelsea then first. Draw at half time. Chelsea win in the end. That brings in at five, but this might be a game to avoid. 
Yes, uh, we have some people trusting the draw, even Everton double chance. This is a horrible <laughs> game. Chelsea, Everton to finish um, this video. Tom, your safe bet. Yeah, say bet this week has to be Manchester City on its own. It's not worth your time. So I'd take it at a minus 1.5. That's 2-0 or above. And I think they'll achieve that against Luton. And the Aka? Aka's a risk. It's a risky one. I make no apologies for it. But I like this. Uh, Brentford have to win their game. They just have to win it. It's a huge moment for them. So I think they beat Sheffield United. Nottingham Forest have to win their game against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And so... I'm going to take that. And I'm going to throw in Brighton and Hove Albion. I just have no time for Burnley this season. And if you throw that in, look at the odds. Near seven. That's six to one. It's a bit wild, but I like it. I think it's worth a risk. All right, uh, Tom, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We are very happy to be back uh, in YouTube. Uh, next week, we have uh, FA Cup semifinals. We have Premier League. We will have Tom Rennie. Bye-bye, Tom.